From Washington, this is VOA News. Coming up, the latest on the train derailment in Spain and a look ahead to Sunday's election in Mali. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Norman. Spanish investigators are questioning a driver of the train that derailed in northern Spain, killing 80 people in what is described as the nation's worst rail disaster in 40 years. Reporters say the train may have been traveling more than twice the speed of le its speed limit at the crash just outside of the town of Santiago de Compostela. More than 140 people were injured. On Thursday, Spanish Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy, who was born in Santiago, visited the crash site and the hospital where many of the injured were being treated. Para un santiagués como yo, créanme que este es el día del apóstol más triste de mi vida. And he said as a native of the town, it was one of the saddest days of his entire life. Mr. Rajoy declared three days of mourning to honor the victims of the crash. In other news, Egyptians are gearing up for rival mass rallies later today by those who support the army's ouster of Islamist President Mohamed Morsi and those who demand that he be reinstated. Prime Minister Hassan Beblaoui, ahead of the interim cabinet, is expressing concern about the possible violence. Egypt's highest security body, the National Defense Council, says authorities are committed to ensuring the safety of all peaceful protesters, but warns that no tolerance would be shown to anyone who threatens security. Here in Washington, some lawmakers say there would be no immediate cutoff of American aid to Egypt following the military ouster of Mr. Morsi. The future of that assistance was the focus of a Senate hearing on Thursday. VOA's Michael Bowman reports. For decades, Egypt has been a top recipient of U.S. foreign aid, including substantial military assistance. The chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Democrat Robert Menendez, says aid should continue to flow, at least for now. Abandoning Egypt would be a particularly poor policy choice. Similarly, the committee's top Republican, Senator Bob Corker, argued in favor of soothing tensions between Washington and Cairo. I do think that our nation's role in Egypt right now should be an instrument of calmness. Wednesday, the Pentagon announced a delay in the delivery of four F-16 jets to Egypt. A spokesman said the U.S.-Egyptian military relationship endures, but that the administration desires a return to democratic governance in Egypt as soon as possible. Michael Bowman, VOA News, the Capitol. A series of deadly attacks killed at least 30 people, wounded scores more in Iraq. The deadliest attack Thursday, at least 16 people were killed. More than 15 wounded when a bomb exploded outside a cafe north of Baghdad. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon says the death toll in Syria's two-year-old civil war has reached 100,000. Most of the casualties he has are civilians. Mr. Bond says the fighting must end and that it's imperative to hold a peace conference in Geneva as soon as possible. And in Syria on Thursday, a car bomb blew up in a Damascus suburb, killing 17. Malians rank peace and stability as top priorities for the country's next president. They go to the polls on Sunday amid tensions in the far northern town of Kidal. VOA's and look reporting now from Bamako on what the candidates have been saying about Kidal. What to do about Kidal? Mali's 27 presidential candidates have tried to strike a delicate balance, pledging to get tough on the country's vast security challenges while also fostering reconciliation. Candidate Ibrahim Boubacar Keita was the first of four frontrunners to make a campaign stop in Kidal, the bastion of the Tuareg rebellion, 
1,600 kilometers from the capital, Bamako. Kidal counts less than 1 percent of the country's registered voters. But as the home turf of the rebellion, it boasts more than its fair share of symbolism in this election. And look, VOA News, Bamako. Pope Francis celebrated Mass in Rio de Janeiro ahead of welcoming hundreds of thousands of young pilgrims on Thursday to a ceremony, World Youth Day in Rio. The Pope urged the crowd to stay excited about their faith. World Youth Day ceremony uh, highlighted the events of the Pope's week-long trip to Brazil. As many as one million people expected to be on hand, they were many of the young Catholics gathering at Rio's famed Copacabana Beach. Get more news at our website, voanews.com.